This video is well overdue. Like, it was supposed to come out in August of 2021, and then it was supposed to come out in January, and now here we are in summer of 2022. With that being said, welcome to my setup tour for 2022, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the main setup. This is where I play most of my games and do most of the recording as well. Not much editing goes on on this computer. So where do we start with? Let's start with the computer. So I actually didn't build this computer, it is a pre-built. Look, I really wanted to build my computer, but you know, it, it slipped, okay? Look, I was gonna build it, and then I didn't. Like, do you understand? Like, sometimes it slips, right? This pre-built is from CyberPower, and has an 8-core Ryzen 1700X, a GTX 1070 Ti, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I got this computer in 2018 for $1,300. Do you think I got scammed? I'm gonna let y'all be the judge of that. I'm gonna open up the computer so you can see better inside. There's that CPU spinning really, really fast. There's also a cat here for some reason. I also really like the red LEDs. I'm pretty sure there is a way to change the colors, but I honestly just don't care. So I'm keeping them red. They still look good though. Here's a funny story. So back in 2018, I was playing some playground Fortnite with some of my friends and I was eating a pop tart while I was trying to play the game and in the game I was getting attacked. So I quickly put my pop tart down, but I dropped it on top of the vents on my computer and some of the crumbs went inside the computer and it went inside of my GPU. So to this day, there are pop tart crumbs inside of my GPU that are four years old. So do what you will with that information. If you choose to not respect me after this, uh, I don't blame you. Here's also my cable situation. As you can see, it is uh, very, very well organized and uh, nothing is in a disarray. Okay, so let's take a look at the peripherals. So right now I have three mice, the Glorious Model O, the Rocat Cone EMP, and the Bloody A70 Matte Black. Or for you bedless noob stands, it's the Bloody A Bedless. Currently, the Model O is my daily driver, but I will also use the EMP and the Bloody A70 for drag clicking. I do also use the Model O for drag clicking, but the drag clicking is just better on the Bloody A70 and the EMP. If you want a mouse recommendation from me, I would recommend the Model O since I believe it's the most versatile out of these three mice. The Model O can do almost every clicking method. It's also really light and so are the clicks, unlike the Bloody A70 and the EMP, which they're more on the heavier side for both clicks and weight. Now, I don't know if you saw, but I have this roll of masking tape here. You might be wondering why I have it there. It's because I used to use masking tape to help me drag click before, but ever since I got duck electrical tape, I've never really needed to use it. So now I just use it as a mouse bungee to stop the wire from my mouse from falling off the table. I also use it to hold any other mice that I'm not using. Now that we're done with the mice, let's take a look at the keyboard. So the keyboard I'm currently using is the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2 Tournament Edition. This keyboard has Razer orange switches, which are similar to Cherry MX Browns. The effect I currently have on the keyboard is the fire effect, except it has red and blue instead of red and orange. Now, uh, keep this between you and me, but for the A key and the Alt key on the keyboard, their RGBs are actually broken. Before I got this keyboard, I actually used to have the Razer Huntsman Elite. The problem with that keyboard was that it was just so loud. Like, really, really, really loud. If you go back to some of my older videos, you can actually hear that the keyboard is louder than my own voice. So I needed to get that fixed ASAP. And at some point, I actually managed to break some of the RGBs on the keyboard with my sweat. But because of that, I decided to switch to a quieter keyboard. And then I found out about noise suppression. So I kinda didn't have a keyboard for a month for no reason. But hey, it's not all that bad. The Black Widow actually got rid of the number pad, so I had more room on my keyboard. And in my opinion, the Black Widow actually has a better wrist rest than the Huntsman. So I saw this as an absolute win. Moving on from the keyboard, let's take a look at the monitor. This monitor is a 240Hz monitor from Spectre. Considering the price of this monitor, it is actually so good. I got this monitor for about $250 on Black Friday, and it does exactly what I need. There's only two real problems that I actually have about this monitor. One, the colors are a little washed out, but that's okay since I'm not going to be doing any photo editing on this computer, so that's not really going to be a problem. However, I did notice that this monitor shipped with a dead pixel. Unfortunately, the dead pixel was really close to the center of the monitor, 
so I always have to stare at the dead pixel no matter what. Now hypothetically, I could go and return this monitor and ask for another one without a dead pixel, but I kind of don't feel like waiting a whole month to get a new monitor, so I'm just going to let this one go. Other than that though, this monitor is absolutely amazing. Next up are the headphones. I've had these headphones for about 8 years now, and uh, as you can tell, they've aged very, very well. Besides the mesh parts falling off the headphones, I've actually had to take tape back the microphone to the headphones using electrical tape since it was falling off. As much as I need to replace these headphones, there's nothing really wrong with them. I mean the sound quality is pretty good, and besides the static and any other background noise that the microphone picks up, the microphone's also pretty good too. But I definitely will be replacing these headphones sometime soon. Also, funny story, I bought these headphones for $25 about 8 years ago. I just checked a couple days ago and now these headphones are selling for about $10. To tell you the truth, I feel like I got scammed. Next up is my capture card. This is the Elgato HD60S. I got this capture card back in 2017 and I used to use it to record Mario Kart 8 Deluxe gameplay and I used to post it on my channel, but I've privated all those videos so don't go looking for them. But yeah, I really like this capture card and I'm definitely going to continue to use it. Next up is the mouse pad. There's nothing really much to say about the mouse pad. I just looked up extra large mouse pad on Amazon and bought it in like 2017 and I've been using it ever since. If you look closely, you might actually be able to see the black fading away, so you can tell that I've used this mouse pad for a long time. But this mouse pad's big enough for me to put my keyboard on as well as make really really big swipes with my mouse across the desk. I also have this lamp here that has two lights. This light here never usually gets turned on, but the one up here I usually keep on all the time. However, this light definitely is brighter than the other one. I'm going to turn off the top light so y'all can see how the setup looks in the dark. Looks pretty nice if you ask me. Before we move on to the editing station, we need to take a look at the most important part of the setup, the chair. This right here, this is my gaming chair. And no, this is not a joke. This is the chair that I've been using for the past so many years. In fact, I've had this chair for so long that you can actually see the wood rotting away. You can also see it rotting away a little on the armrests. But yeah, this is the chair that I sit in to play games on. Did y'all actually think I had a really nice chair? Okay, now it's time to move on to the editing station. So I do all of my editing on this MacBook Pro. This MacBook Pro is a 2017 15 inch with 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports and a touch bar. And somehow I've actually managed to cycle this MacBook over 700 times. So that just goes to show how much I use it as well. But yeah, this is where I do all of my audio recording and editing for my videos. And those those are all the Adobe products I use to make my videos. Now I do use a mouse when I edit and the mouse I use is the mouse you get when you buy the GameSir VX aim switch. The reason I got it was because I was supposed to use it on my Nintendo Switch so I could use a mouse and keyboard on it, but there was so much input lag so I ended up just giving up on it. And now it's just my office mouse. This mouse can actually drag click so well, but since it doesn't double click, it doesn't really matter in the end. Next up is my microphone. This is the BM800 and it was one of the most popular budget microphones. I also have this pop filter here to filter out any pops. This microphone actually has built-in background removal, so I actually don't have to go into Audacity and do that myself, which is so nice because noise removal makes my voice sound robotic for some reason, so that's really nice. The only thing I don't like is that even though I have an XLR to 3.5mm jack, it doesn't work with my MacBook because Apple removed the feature that allowed you to use external microphones on MacBooks, so you actually have to go and buy an adapter so you can use an external microphone, which is so annoying. And and I also have the microphone mounted to a boom arm so I can move it around. And if you thought the chair from the main setup was bad, well you're going to be glad to know that this chair is even worse. It is a little bit more comfortable, but the only problem is that it sits so low that I actually have to bend my legs when I sit. Here's a life pro tip. If you have to bend your legs to sit, get a new chair or raise your chair because that's not healthy for you. But yeah, that pretty much covers my whole setup. Let me know what y'all think in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in my next video.